Welcome back everybody to another build video. My name is Kyle Dahl and I'm with Scorpion Power Systems. We're rolling straight into the build of a Skywing 48 inch Edge 540T. This is actually the second one of these 48 inch Edge planes from Skywing that I've owned. Uh, the first one I bought it for the development of the Scorpion A3017 motor. And in the span of that testing, it has gotten absolutely small. So I figured I would get a new one. I absolutely love the bright green on the 67 inch Edge 540. So I went ahead and got the same scheme on this smaller one. The thing that originally impressed me about these planes is it's not your typical wood and monocoat plane. This covering is actually a foam. So it's a all wood structure underneath, just like a normal plane. But then the surface of it is actually just this foam, which is painted. This is nice as it helps keep the cost down. These planes are super economic to get into. And then uh, also they're super easy to repair. That's enough about the plane for now. We'll go over more and more features as we build. But first I'm gonna start off with just a roll call. So I'm gonna go through everything that you're gonna find in the box and what equipment I'm gonna use, and then we'll get into the build. So of course you'll have yourself two wings. The aileron is not hinged to the surface, but these are just little CA hinges, uh, which mount these together. So they're super easy to install. So left and a right wing, you have your landing gear, then you have the cowl. One nice thing about this cowl is that when you get it, it actually has some wood and foam inserts left in. And what's great about that is it helps it from getting crushed. Moving along, we have ourselves a rudder. Again, it mounts with just a couple CA hinges, wheel pants, uh, side force generators, elevator. The kit comes with a nice little plastic spinner. Moving on, we have ourselves the fuselage with the quick, quick release canopy, which is super great. Here we have the firewall, and in this bag is actually some little inserts. Uh, which are actually get glued to the wing. Um, so this is the center part of the wing. Of course, there's a nice carbon fiber wing tube. And then lastly, there'll be a bag full of hardware. So we have all of the ball links and the linkages. We have a bag with some screws and axles. Uh, the axles are obviously for the wheels and the screws are for mounting the motor. Two wheels. These are some included extensions, which are used to uh, go from the front of the plane down to the tail surfaces. So we'll have to mount those in. We have the control horns. So these are the control horns for all the surface as well. There are some uh, servo arm extenders. So you can mount these servo arm extenders onto your existing servo arms to help you get a little bit more travel. We have a bag full of the CA hinges, some wood shims, which is used to space the engine uh, in or out as needed, tail wheel assembly. Then there's some triangle stock included in the kit. This is used to reinforce certain areas, such as where you glue the, the motor box onto the plane. And uh, also I kept it around and I ended up using it a lot during the lifespan of the plane. Uh, I used it to help fix things, glue things back together. So it's nice that they include some and some extra. Lastly, they give you a few zip ties and some Velcro as well. They give you everything that you need. All you need to buy is a power system. So motor, ESC and prop, as well as four servos and a bottle of CA. For the power system, I'm gonna be using the Scorpion A3017 PNP combo kit. This is a power system combination kit from Scorpion Power System that we just released. There's two options, one for 4S batteries and one for 6S batteries. They have almost equal performance, it's just if you want to use a 4S battery or a 6S battery. This combo comes with everything that you're going to need. It has a Scorpion A3017 motor in it. It has a Tribunus 06 80 amp ESC, which has a built-in HVBEC and also has telemetry readout. Included as well is a Scorpion 13x6 propeller. This is a really nice propeller. We worked with the manufacturer to choose a propeller that's perfectly sized for this motor to give you tons of power and tons of efficiency. We added in extra steps on the balancing a QC section to make sure that these props are really perfectly balanced. And then we have ourselves a custom metallic gold painted finish, which just makes this prop look gorgeous. It, uh, it really works with any kind of scheme you know, you might think gold is really like a loud and pronounced, but you know, it, it really just goes with almost every color of plane. This is one of my favorite things about this power system combo. Additionally, there's an included anti-slip lock strap, as well as some Scorpion stickers, 
thrust washers, and things like that. For servos, I've got myself some micro servos from Expert. These are the CM2401 servo. So this is a metal case HV micro servo. Super fast, super strong. It definitely is one of the most premium servos that you could use in this plane. It's completely overkill. But you know, I, I had on my first plane tons of cheap little servos that I just threw in and they kept wearing out or breaking. So I figured, you know what? I'm just gonna go for gold here and I got the best servos that I could find. Now you know what's in the box and what equipment I'm gonna be using, let's get to building. This is a super simple kit to build, so it should take no time at all. This build is super self-explanatory, so I'm not gonna go through in much detail. Like I'm more or less just gonna show you the steps and the processes, and if there's anything specific, I'll point it out. But more or less, this build is very straightforward. As with all my builds, the thing that I'm gonna do first is the stuff that I hate the most, which is the gluing. So I'm gonna get, <clears throat> I'm gonna get the ailerons glued onto the wings, the elevator glued into the plane, elevator hinged, and then the rudder mounted and hinged up as well. Before hinging the aileron to the wing, I'm actually gonna glue in these uh, center sections of the wing. There's of course a left and a right side, but uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. It just slides in, and then all I'm gonna do is look at it on the end, <clears throat> line it up so that it looks generally straight. Don't want it to be angled up or down. So make it generally straight, and then hit it with some thin CA. The thin CA is clogged up. I always use one that has a metal tip on it. That way, if your CA gets clogged up, you can just take a lighter and basically burn out the, uh, the CA. The reason I glue this inboard section on first is so that when I'm mounting the aileron to the wing, I have something to align it to so that I can make sure my spacing is right and that it's not gonna hit later on. Uh, as far as hinging the aileron to the wing, the whole kit just uses these little CA hinges, which are super simple. There is a few pre-cut slots on the wing and all the surfaces. Um, the CA hinge, just put it in. It is cut to a predetermined depth, so you don't have to worry about the hinge falling into the wing or anything. Just slide them in, generally in the middle of the slot. It can be a little bit of a challenge to get all of the hinges lined up and in place, but just take your time. Make sure that you have each hinge um, into each slot and not that one is you know actually sitting outside of the slot or something like this So just take your time and then you may notice that The hinge sits off a little bit from the surface with all the hinges mounted um, There shouldn't be much of a gap. So when you're gluing go ahead and just push the aileron into the, the wing um, So that everything is nice and tidy and close together make sure that the aileron is not hitting on the uh, the inboard section of the wing. Also make sure that the aileron is not protruding too far out uh, on the tip where it would hit the side force generator. Take some thin CA and drip some drops. Uh, normally I just drip across the top on each surface a few drops. Then I'll flip the wing over, drip on the bottom, uh, let that dry or hit it with some kicker. Then I'll start bending the surface down and with the surface bent down, I'll go back along again and hit a few more drops, uh, both on the wing side and on the aileron side, making sure that glue can seep into the joint. Repeat that process for both wings, and then like that, we should be good. Our ailerons will be on. All right, no major issues with the wings. I'm gonna set these aside for the time being. And we're gonna move on to mounting the elevator and the rudder hinges. When mounting the elevator, do note that you can't hinge the elevator to the horizontal stabilizer before putting it into the plane. You have to first wiggle this um, elevator through the plane in a specific way and then slide the horizontal stabilizer in after the fact. Um, if you put it together first, you won't be able to get it into the plane, so don't do that. Before doing that, you'll look in the plane and you'll see that there's still a, a little piece of wood left in. This is just for shipping to help with the rigidity of the plane during the shipping process but we're gonna go ahead and just pop out that piece of wood before putting in the elevator and the horizontal stabilizer. All right, to get the elevator in, what I do is I take the surface and I flip it upside down. And I then feed the counterbalance through and then slowly wrap this around and I get the surface through it. Then I can go to this white section in the fuse and flip it to the other direction and pull it back into the plane. At this point, I can then slide in my horizontal stabilizer 
into place. And then once I do that, then everything is mounted and uh, ready to be hinged. Hinging the elevator is the same steps as on the ailerons. When trying to mount this hinge, I see that this hinge is not cut deep enough uh, or there's some glue in the hole. So this wouldn't be able to, to close fully. So I'm gonna take a, a knife or an X-Acto blade, whatever you have, and I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna kind of cut in the slot to uh, make it a little bit deeper so that this hinge can fit in nicely. And then hit them with some CA on the top and bottom multiple times, moving the surface up and down, making sure that CA can really get in and flow into the hinges. As far as aligning the elevator into the plane, you know, if this was a big plane, I would probably go through and trammel it uh, to make sure that the elevator is aligned um, side to side and uh, rotationally with the plane. But since it's just a foam plane and it's a fun plane, there are some predetermined uh, paint lines on the plane, which I think are gonna be pretty accurate. So I'm just gonna go ahead and align the elevator based off of that. So I'm gonna make sure that the surface is pushed fully into the plane and then try my best to look and see that it is aligned uh, with the paint lines matching the uh, fuselage. And I think that's gonna be pretty close. Go ahead and just hit that with a few drops of CA on the top and bottom in all directions. Last surface to do is the rudder. Again, following the same steps, just uh, push the hinges in, make sure that they can seat fully line it up and uh, glue it in place. All surfaces are now hinged up. They do give you several spare hinges uh, in the kit. Make sure you keep these because I have uh, ripped surfaces off before, like you come in on a low pass and you hit the rudder or something like this, you will rip off the surface, uh, which is nice. You know, it just rips off rather than break your surface, but uh, yeah, be sure to keep these CA hinges so that you have them. So if you need to glue a surface back on, you can. Now it's time to get the control horns glued in. So in one of the hard bags, you'll find some, uh, I think it's G10 or some kind of fiber material, which has the four control horns and also four servo arm extenders. So all of the control horns are the same. So each surface used the exact same thing. So there's not the specific one. Uh, all I need to do to prepare these control horns is I will take a sanding block and I'm just gonna scuff it up really good on the section that's gonna go inside the surface. Once those control horns are all scuffed up really nice, I'm gonna wanna go ahead and try to test fit these into the surface before I glue them. Sometimes they can be a little tight and if needed, you can uh, clear out the hole with the X-Acto blade or a knife or something. As far as gluing these control horns in, if this was a bigger plane uh, made out of wood or something, I would definitely use epoxy to glue these control horns in. But since this is such a small plane, I'm gonna go ahead and just use some thin CA. I have a really fine tip needle point on it, so I can actually put some CA and also push into the foam to help get CA all the way down uh, in the groove. These control horns do have a, a stop at the top of them, so they can only go in so far. So when you're mounting them, just push them all the way in until that little lip is flush with the surface, and uh, that's how you know how deep to put it. I don't really feel like putting in servos yet and doing ball linkages, so the next step I'm gonna do is actually to put this plane up on the gear and get the wheels on it. So when mounting the landing gear, do note that uh, there is a small piece of foam here that you do have to cut off. Now don't cut it completely off. The way it's designed is you can just slip one side of this foam, and then that allows you to slide the landing gear in, tighten your bolts and everything, and then you can glue that piece uh, back down. That way you have kind of a landing gear um, cover. It's not just an open bare landing gear with bare bolts. It's a nice and streamlined like that. Also one thing to note, uh, if you're looking for the landing gear mounting bolts, they're not in any of the hardware bags. They are pre-mounted into the fuselage. So you'll have to go in and take those bolts out and then turn around and bolt them back in to your landing gear. I have this foam cut now on one side, so I'll be able to pry it up and slide this landing gear into place. Uh, do know that there's only two holes that bolt onto the landing gear. The holes are offset to the front. So if you're mounting the landing gear in the plane, the holes should be more towards the front side of the landing gear rather than the rear side. So just note that. The landing gear mounting bolts are a metal bolt going into a blind nut, so make sure you do use Loctite. You do have to really bend that foam up to get the landing gear in. It might crease a little bit, 
when you glue it back down, it might not align perfectly. There might be some paint chips. Don't worry, it's not a big deal. I'm sure this plane is gonna have a lot more dings than this um, in, in its lifespan. So now let's get it up onto the main wheels. I got myself two wheels and the axles here. The thing that's nice about these wheels and axles is that this is Skywings, I believe it's their patented design where you can put the wheel and the axle on and then tighten the nut all the way down and the nut bottoms out on a little lip on the axle, which keeps it from uh, compressing the wheel. So that allows you to just really crank down on that nut so it can't come off, but it won't uh, compress your wheel and won't stop from spinning. We have the wheel on the axle. We can pull the larger nut off the other side of the axle and then go ahead and grab your wheel pants. These do have some foam left in them just to help with shipping to not get damaged. So I'll just go ahead and cut out the bits of foam that are left inside. Then you do have to slide the axles through the wheel pants and it's a little bit of a tight fit, but uh, luckily this foam is very flexible. So you can just kind of bend and flex the foam uh, as needed to get the wheel into this wheel pant. From my previous experience with this plane, I'll share a tip with you that I ended up doing on my last one of these planes. So this wheel pan is quite flexy and easy to break. So one thing that I did do, I took the hardware pack that has the wood motor spacers. So you have some extras. I take one of those and then I actually put it on the axle and glue it to the inside of the wheel pan. So what that does is it just helps support the wheel pan to the axle itself. So I'll just put that wood spacer in there and then tack it with a little bit of CA. Then it just helps to keep things a bit more rigid. So now that that's all done, we can go ahead and mount this wheel pan. Just slide it through the hole, uh, use some pliers to hold the axle from this side and uh, screw the nut in from the back side. As far as lining up and locking the wheel pants, it's a pretty tight friction fit. There is a hole which you could optionally choose to drill and uh, put a small little wood screw in there even it's kind of nice because if you bump it or move it it doesn't break it just moves out of the way now let's move on to the tail wheel the tail wheel does require some very minor assembly just put the bolt through uh, at which acts as an axle thread it into place and there's space for a little lock nut on the back side i will put some loctite just to make sure things stay secure you don't want to tighten it too much otherwise your tail wheel won't spin just slide the tail wheel up into the tail wheel mounting bracket and you have to slide this metal rod through. Don't try to put the Z-bin through the plastic, you will fail. Just come with the straight end from the other side and push the wire through. For tail wheel control, there's just this little uh, piece that has a hole in it which uh, presses and glues into the rudder which uh, this control rod goes through and uh, moves the tail wheel when you move your rudder. So to get this in, um, I had to take a screwdriver or something and really just try to basically make a hole. There was some glue inside mine, so not a big deal. Just push it in. To mount this assembly, there's a small piece of foam which we will remove. Then you'll find in the fuselage a groove which interlocks with this lip on the tail wheel which helps keep things aligned slide the metal rod through the tail, con tail wheel control uh, guide, two bolts, and you're done. Tail wheel is on and functioning, wheels and wheel pants are on. Boom, first time up on the gear. I always love this step. Call me a nerd, but I like when this happens. Next, I'm gonna move on to mounting in the servos into the elevator rudder and wings. In regards to what orientation to mount the servos in, uh, Skywing is really nifty. They leave a little piece of wood with a laser engraving on it, which shows not only the orientation that the servo should go in, but also which direction the servo arm should go. And then you can just rip out that little piece of wood and then go ahead and mount in your servo. For the servo wires going from the front of the fuse down to the tail, they do include two servo extensions in the kit but uh, we ourselves have to plumb them. So go ahead, make sure you just get some kind of long metal wire, such as this, which you can use to plumb these lines. You will waste, I think, so much time trying to do it by hand. So just get yourself a long piece of wire 
and go ahead and do it that way. After getting the wires plumbed, I'm just gonna go ahead and mount this servo and affix it with two wood screws. I am gonna use a drill to make a small pilot hole. I will drill and then screw in the screw to form the threads, screw out the screw, and then put some thin CA in the hole to solidify those threads, then screw the, screw the screw back in. Next up, we're gonna prepare the servo horns. So this kit comes with servo horn extensions, a little fiber piece which extends the stock servo arms. So let's go ahead and choose one. It has some pre-drilled holes, so we're gonna try to find a servo horn that matches best this um, extended control horn. I got all four control horns finished up, and then I went ahead at the same time and mounted the ball links. After looking at the geometry on the plane, uh, I, I feel that it's gonna be best if all the ball links are on the underside of the linkage. So when you put the linkage on, the ball link should be towards the surface, or towards the, uh, the airplane. Now I'm gonna go through and make up the servo linkages. Included in the pack, there is three ones that are short and one that is long. The three short ones go on the two ailerons and the one elevator, and the one long one goes on the rudder. What I'm gonna do is go through and just manually by eye center the servos and then adjust these links so that they're more or less in the same position. One thing to note that I had to do on the elevator here, um, if I put the bolt from the outside of the plane so that the, um, the threads of the bolt was going towards the plane, it would have hit the side of the fuselage. So what I had to do was take the bolt from the inside out and then to access it, I was able to come in through this opening here on the other side of the fuselage to get to that bolt to go ahead and tighten it. I put the servo arms on to align the linkages, but I am gonna pop them off, all of them now. That way, the first time I plug up the plane, uh, if the servos aren't centered, it doesn't move and bind my servos. So just make sure even after this step, just unclick the, uh, the servo arms. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the power system. The motor box comes pre-assembled and pre-glued already. As far as orientation, just look for this uh, lip that is overhanging. That goes towards the top. So that is the top orientation and it just slides into place and interlocks into the front former of the fuselage. All I'm gonna do is hit this with some thin CA and then there is included some pre-cut triangle stocks which you can put and glue in on the left and the right side of the motor box. And then there is some additional uh, triangle stock which you could use to put on the bottom but beware of putting it on the top. If you put the triangle stock in the middle it will block this little opening which the canopy comes through. So I don't actually recommend putting any triangle stock on the top. Now it's time to get the power system on. As I said before, I've got my Scorpion A3017 PMP combo. There is two KV options available, one for 4S and one for 6S. This here is the one for 6S. So I'm planning to be using a 6S 1400 to 1800 milliamp battery. But we also have one that is for 4S, runs on a 2200 to 2800 milliamp, or bigger if you want. But yes, this is a nice PMP combo, comes with the motor with the pre-mounted cross mount. Uh, it has a custom gold painted propeller, which was specifically chosen to work optimally with this motor. And then one of our Tribunus 0680M ESCs, which has a HVBEC, telemetry, all of that good stuff. The firewall does have pre-drilled holes, um, which match up to this cross mount that we made. I remember from my last build of these planes, I ended up having to use two of these wood stock washers that were included, but it was a bit too much, but one wasn't enough. So in this PNP combo, there's some uh, thinner washers, which can be used for thrust adjustment or spacing the engine in or out. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use one of the stock wood washers plus one of the stock washers included in the kit and we'll see how that alignment is. I've got just two of the bolts in because at this step I want to go ahead and check the positioning of the cowl. So to prepare the cowl, just gently rip out all of the wood and foam and then uh, we'll go ahead and we'll mount this onto the plane. Perfect. So with that, uh, one of the stock washers plus one of the included plastic shims 
The cowl, the uh, engine spacing is absolutely perfect. Now that that's confirmed, I can go ahead and uh, put the remaining bolts in. The ESC and this PNP combo comes pre-soldered with an XT60 connector, as well as with the motor, um, the motor connectors on. So all I need to do is plug this in and uh, mount it up. I'll just use a little bit of the manufacturer included Velcro, some zip ties, and I'll go ahead and get the ESC mounted, plugged in and all wired up. So you may notice my hair is a little bit longer. It's actually been a month and a half since I started the ESC installation. Uh, I got sidetracked with actually putting this A3017 PNP combo to market, along with a whole lot of other products. But we're back and we're gonna finish this up. I finally got the ESC mounted and wired. Everything was super simple like that. The next thing to do is just mount my receiver and then I can go through and uh, set up all my control surfaces. And at that point, we're pretty much done. So I've got everything all wired up and the control surfaces hooked up and leveled. As far as control rates, especially on a plane like this, I'm just gonna max them out. Like I'm gonna go ahead and just give as much as I can and then I'll fly it like that. If I feel like I need less control, I'll lower it later. But at least as a starting point, I'm just gonna max everything out. So up, down, right, left, right, left. That's all good. Last step to do is to put the cowl on. And uh, this is something I wanna point out to you guys because it's a super nice feature. There's no bolts or anything to mount this cowl. On the front of this uh, firewall here, there is just these little fingers which go into an interlocking tab on the cowl. So to mount the cowl, you just slide it on, line up the tabs, line up the tabs, and once it's aligned, you just push down on the cowl. And that engages those fingers and then what keeps the cowl on in flight is on the front of the canopy there's actually a little tab here which goes through a bulkhead in the fuse and the cowl and that keeps your cowl from coming off so as you can see it's quite a snug fit so it's not going to come off in your normal operations but when you put the canopy in it locks everything together the only thing left to do is get my propeller mounted on mount my receiver tidy up the wires a little bit but uh, other than that, this baby is good and ready to go. So I think next I'm gonna see you guys all out at the flying field for its maiden flight.